If you haven't done so already, pause the video and attempt the question on your own before listening on. We can begin by drawing a picture that represents the information being described. So here we have the circular coil, and through the center of the circular coil we have drawn an imaginary line that is often referred to as the normal line. It passes right through the center and is perpendicular to the plane of the loop. We've shown a magnetic field line projecting in the same direction as the normal. And then in the other picture, we've shown the magnetic field line pointing in the completely opposite direction. And of course, we've done that because the question states that the direction of the field reverses. Despite the directions changing, in both cases, the magnetic field has a value of 1.1 Tesla. From this picture, we can begin to look at the initial magnetic flux and then also the final magnetic flux. So here is the flux formula. We can see that flux is equal to the number of turns in the coil times the magnetic field multiplied by the area of the loop and then times the cosine of the angle. We can see from the picture that initially the magnetic field and the normal line are pointing in the same direction. So what that means is that the initial angle would be equal to zero degrees. On the other hand, in the final scenario, the magnetic field line and the normal line point in completely opposite directions, so the final angle will be 180 degrees. As for the area, that was given to us directly in the question as being 100 centimeters squared. Note that we will have to convert that into meters squared. Now, of course, most of us know that one meter is 100 centimeters, but because we have centimeters squared, we would actually have to square that conversion factor. And when you compute that, you should get 1 times 10 to the minus 2 meters squared. So that will represent the area. And then n, the number of turns in the coil, was given to us as 200. So that's relatively straightforward. We can go ahead and plug in all the values for the initial flux as well as the final flux. So here are all the known values plugged in. When you compute this, you should get 2.2 Webers for the initial flux. And then over here, kind of running out of room, but over here, for the final flux, we should get negative 2.2 Webers. Same magnitude, but just opposite sign. Now, knowing the initial and final magnetic fluxes is important because it's going to help us calculate what is called the induced EMF in the coil. That is simply equal to the change in flux over the change in time. The change in time was given to us as 0.10 seconds. The change in flux is now going to be straightforward because the change in any quantity is just the final minus the initial, and we have those, so we can plug that into this equation. Notice the absolute value symbols will make that change in flux positive. When you compute this, you should get 44, and since this is an induced EMF, the unit would be volts. So we now have the number of volts that are induced in the coil. To get the current, we simply have to remember the following relationship. That the current is equal to an EMF divided by the resistance. Some of us might remember this equation from a previous chapter as equaling volts, or electric potential, divided by the resistance. It's basically the same equation, so we're just going to plug in the induced EMF we just calculated, and then the resistance in the coil was given to us as being 5 ohms. I actually think if you go back and start the video from the beginning that said volts, that was a typo. That should have said 5.0 ohms. And so we plug in and we calculate and we see that we get 8.8 .8 amps as the current that is induced in the coil. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address listed on the screen.